Hi, hello, how's it going? It's Alana. Welcome back to my channel. Today I bring you guys another episode of Buzzed In. It's been a hot second. Coming to you from a bit of a different background. I'm actually at a hotel room in Split, Croatia. So we're rolling with it. Today we're headed to a very cute apartment in the kind of Prospect Park area, which I haven't really highlighted yet, but it's such a beautiful area. So I'm really excited to show you guys the apartment. We're headed over to meet Raquel. I actually got connected to her through my friend Dawn, who's helping film this video. I love the style of our apartment. People have been requesting to some more apartments on the like lower end of the rental price spectrum, which is hard to find because New York is so expensive, but this is gonna be a good one. So as usual, before we jump into the tour, I'm gonna tell you guys just a teeny bit of history. And today, instead of talking about a specific neighborhood, I thought it actually would be interesting to highlight Prospect Park itself. So Prospect Park is situated around a bunch of different neighborhoods. There's Park Slope, Prospect Heights, Prospect Lefferts Garden, Flatbush, Windsor Terrace, and it's also very close to the Brooklyn Art Museum as well as the Brooklyn Botanical Garden. So Prospect Park was designed back in the 1800s. It was actually designed by the same designers of Central Park, Frederick Olmsted and Calvert Vaux, if I'm saying that right. The idea for it was first proposed in 1859 and then it actually came to fruition, was pretty much done almost 10 years later in 1867. It actually was the first landscape park in the US and it took over 2,000 workers to plant the different trees and bushes, flowers, etc. This goal was it to kind of create this almost natural barrier that shielded the park goers from the outside buildings and a lot of even the outside noise of the city. And it was also designed to require very little maintenance. So the park continued to grow over the years. Then in 1987, the Prospect Park Alliance was formed, which helps sustain, restore, and advances Brooklyn's backyard. I don't even think it's fair to say that Prospect Park is like the Central Park of Brooklyn because Prospect Park is so incredible on its own and it's much bigger than Central Park that it deserves its own recognition apart from Central Park. If you visit New York, I highly recommend you check it out. I love going for a run through there. So if you're having a little nature craving and you need a nature fix, definitely check out Prospect Park. It's incredible. Okay, taking a quick break to say thank you to today's sponsor. Our sponsor for today is BetterHelp. I am a huge fan. I have been working with them on and off for the past year and I've been using them on and off for years now. Um, if you have not heard of them, it's basically a online platform where you can get connected to a licensed professional therapist and do online therapy. It's truly an incredible way to work on and prioritize your mental health. They have so many licensed therapists. I think there's over 20,000 in their network that you can choose from and you can get talking to someone in as little as 48 hours. BetterHelp too works really hard to match you with the right person. So they assess your needs and they offer different suggestions. And then you can go on and you can kind of look through different profiles to find the right fit for you, which I really like. It's available worldwide as well. It's also less expensive than traditional offline therapy check them out take charge of your mental health and visit better help that's h-e-l-p and join the over 2 million people taking charge of their mental health today i also have a little discount code uh you get 10 percent off your first month using this code right here and everything of course will be linked down in the description below so without further ado let's get back to the video and so on that note enough talking for me let's go head on over to raquel's apartment <music> Welcome to my home. My name is Raquel. I am from Minnesota. I just moved to New York um, like seven months ago. I live in this apartment. It's a one bedroom um, by myself with my two cats, Finn and Marlo. I pay $16.50, but it is rent stabilized, so um, really lucky in that way. I live in Brooklyn, a block off of the Prospect Park. All right, as you can see, you know, you walk into the entryway, you can see my bedroom right away. The rest of my apartment is super graphic um, and really colorful. So in here, I just wanted to keep things a little bit more you know, organic feeling, a little bit softer, kind of romantic. Natural linens, I really like luxurious kind of hotel vibe. So all white bed. And then I've got this Ogawa Kazumasa print up here. He was a painter and photographer in Japan in like the late 1800s. And I just think it's really cool. He used to like use these chemicals to paint his photography. So this is an iris. I just think it's like, like I said, kind of that softer central vibes kind of fun. Facially, it's like very long and not so wide. So I've got my vanity sort of set up, like book ended on my bed. Everything sort of, you know, living on this wall. And then I have this projector that I set up and then keeping this wall a little bit um, simple so that, you know, that can be function as that. 
All right, coming out of my bedroom, you get back into this entryway here. Most notably this, I call it my entryway station. Of course has coats on here, your essentials before you leave the house, all my tote bags. And then this is where I keep all the things that I need a reminder to do, like this library book that I need to return. All right, coming left out of the entryway, you can enter the bathroom here. Like any rental bathroom, it's not, um, exactly everything that I would choose, mainly this gray tile. Traditionally, you know, I wouldn't put like a really warm color palette with cool tones, I guess, but I don't know, it's kind of made like an eclectic mix of things. So this sun shower curtain, which is creating this wonderful like warmth in here, is from Coming Soon in the Lower East Side. Um, the brand is Quiet Town. And then these, you know, fun towels are from Bagu. Um, just some like fun little accents here, bringing some like joy and warmth into this like, what was kind of a cool and sterile bathroom. All right, coming out of the bathroom then is kind of right into the main living area. As you can see, it wears many hats. It's living room, dining room, workstation, kitchen, all in one, you know, kind of classic New York City style. Over here, of course, my workstation. I work from home every day. So this shelving system, it's from Home Depot. So totally customizable. I just went and picked out all of the components and it's floating. So that was kind of a trust with myself to see if I could do it. Um, there was like, I think four trips to the hardware store that day and like 10 FaceTimes with my dad. But then this bottom is just from Ikea. So I think kind of proof that you can buy regular white things and just style it in a way that makes it your own. And then, you know, my cat station over here, they, when I work all day, they can't be uh, like very far by. So I, I put it right by my workstation. Some favorite little items on my shelves, I guess. I love this little like marbled uh, base. I don't know, I found that at a vintage store in Minneapolis. I also love this print here. I mean, doesn't it just make you want to dance a little bit? And then the star of the show, I love this chair so much. It is admittedly a knockoff, but the design is inspired by the Wasili chair by a guy named um, Marcel Brewer. He was a student at the Bauhaus school, you know, back in like early uh, 1900s Germany. I guess the quick and dirty is just that like the art that came out of it, the architecture and everything is like very modern and sleek and sort of industrialist. A few steps over is the dining area. Um, cool thing about this area is that everything is secondhand. These floating shelves came from Facebook Marketplace, along with a lot of the glassware actually. These were a vintage gift from a good friend of mine for my birthday. And then these fun little teacups in multiple colors. I just thought the colors were charming. Um, they're from an antique store in my hometown. I love these chairs. I spent a lot of time in Copenhagen and I took a chair design class there actually. And we learned a lot about Arne Jakobsen who designed the ant chair, which is like really iconic. Um, and these just reminded me of it. And then a glass table, you know, a couple of reasons I like this. A lot of my other choices, like I said, the velvet and like the jute rug and you know, the dark floors are kind of like heavier feeling. And so having glass is like a little bit of a sparkle. And then with small spaces, glass is just functional because it doesn't take a lot of like visual space. So it doesn't feel like it's taking over in like a small area. So yeah, love that. <laughs> All right, and finally moving into the living space here, probably where I spend the most time. First and foremost, my green velvet couch. I've always wanted one of these. Um, I'm not really sure where that came from or why. I just knew that when I moved into my own space, that was kind of the first thing I got and then everything was kind of matching for that. It has a adjustable chaise here, as you can see, so really functional for a small space. I can move it to either side or like move it over here if I have people over and you can sit facing each other. How nice. This rug under me, um, similarly, when I moved in, I had my eyes set on this amazing designer rug that was like two grand. And I ended up, you know, sourcing, you know, a cheaper one um, that's this natural kind of jute fiber and this white. And then I painted the rest with these stencils and diluted black house paint. So nothing fancy, but it just took me a while, approximately one season of Evelyn Paris. So. Gallery wall up here, of course. Probably my favorite piece on here is this Picasso art exhibition poster. It's, as you can see, from Minneapolis, so a little slice of home there. In a gallery wall, I really like to incorporate, obviously, some like really personal touches. This is my dad and I, I think in like 1998. But then just putting it, you know, in like a shiny frame and like an interesting mat, I think can elevate family photos into something that doesn't look like it's at your grandma's house. A good friend of mine um, did this, so I love having that piece up here. Um, this self-portrait was a gift from the same friend, actually. And then the frame TV. Uh, I love this piece. Functionally, like, amazing for me and my design brain because I can turn off this space that's, of course, used for entertainment and TV and stuff, but I can kind of curate it to look like this cohesive set. Great investment here, I love it. My coffee table, again, nothing too fancy. It's it's small, of course, but the nesting and the glass, again, like I mentioned with the visual space, it adds a little bit of, you know, functionality without taking too much like space up. And then this lamp is from Ikea. 
um, and I love it. <laughs> so it just shows that not everything from Ikea needs to look basic, I guess. And then on the back side of my self-living area is just the kitchen, classic rental kitchen. I'm really working with what I have. It's more of a kitchen wall. The only thing that I really picked out here is this rug, which I really like, um, and this like long vintage piece that I found on Etsy. Uh, it's what, 6 p.m. in New York, so it's really kind of the golden hour in my apartment. Um, it kind of changes with the seasons, which is really fun, and I don't know, just the time that it really shines, so. I'm a graphic designer. I moved to New York like seven months ago now, so I'm a New York newbie, I would say, um, but I love it. So I like work in the world of design a lot, so obviously like pulling inspiration from there, but I think in the end, if I had to define it in words, it's organic, eclectic, modern. Organic because I tend to go for textures like velvet or like jute rugs and like wood and things like that that like feel a little bit more, you know, homey and like organic in that way, but then eclectic because I'm a huge fan of like secondhand stuff. The modern, I guess, kind of rounded all out. So that's, I guess, yeah, the, the overall <laughs> sense. A few favorites are the chair over there, the dupe, I guess, of the chair. I'm a big fan of this rug. I also have always wanted a green velvet couch. I don't know when it started or why that is, but I just find it to be really cozy and, you know, I spend a lot of time here. And then the star of the show, the disco ball. Um, again, one of those like trend forward pieces, I think, but I mean, who doesn't like a little bit of sparkle? Landing in Brooklyn, I don't know if I could be in anywhere else now because I have loved it so much. I moved from Minneapolis, which is a really green city. And so when I moved to the city, I knew that this was like a primary kind of circumference I was looking at around Prospect Park. So found this place a block off and I probably go there like every weekday, you know, whether it's like a rollerblade, a walk, bring a book, like whatever it is. And there's just like such a great energy, especially the summer there. And then the Book and Public Library, it's also a cooling station. So when you feel like you're a little bit hot, like it is in New York in, in August, um, I have a library part there, so I go there a lot. Um, and then near there actually, Vanderbilt Ave. There's just great restaurants and they like flood the streets with, you know, outdoor seating and definitely a favorite of mine to walk to on the weekends. 